everyone's talking about the new Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini. And I got to see one in person this year at NAB. And I got to say, it's a pretty cool looking camera. The Ursa that was announced and came out last year has its quirks. It's, you know, a little large for some people, especially the screen. But, you know, it's a pretty popular camera. There were a lot of people at NAB shooting with it. They had brought their own and they were out and about, you know, filming content with it. So it's, it's a popular camera, but I think the Mini is going to be even more popular just for the smaller form factor and the cheaper price point. But there are some things to know because there are two versions of the Mini. There's a 4.6K version and a 4K version. The 4K version uses an older sensor from Blackmagic that's only 12 stops of dynamic range. The newer 4.6K sensor has 15 stops of dynamic range. With those three extra stop, stops, that's that's really impressive. And But it comes at a price point, unfortunately. It's $2,000 extra just for that upgraded sensor. So a lot of people were really excited because they saw the $3,000 price tag on the Ursa Mini, thinking that they're going to get 4.6K and 15 stops of dynamic range. Unfortunately, that's not the case. It's 5,000 minimum for that version. And although the form factor is really nice on the Ursa Mini, everything they're showing has a viewfinder attached and kind of a shoulder support setup, but those are all accessories, so they'll all have to be purchased afterward. And the rep I was speaking to said that the viewfinder itself was around 1,000. I think it was even a little bit more expensive than $1,000 just for the viewfinder. So keep that in mind if you're looking at this camera that it doesn't come with the viewfinder as featured in, in most of the promotional materials. Another thing to consider about the Ursa Mini, if you're looking at getting it once it's released later this year, is that it records to see fast cards, which is a newer technology and like all new technologies, it's, it's expensive, uh, certainly more expensive than SD cards or SSDs. That's not to say it's bad, it's just another additional cost on top of the camera, which a lot of people who are into the Blackmagic Design stuff are looking at those cameras because they're so affordable, because they're offering those high-end cinema features at an attractive price point. But with CFast, you're looking at, I mean, prices right now are expected to maybe drop down to $1.50 per gig, but I was talking to some people at the Transcend booth and they were saying it's probably going to be around $2 per gig for a little while. And because you're going to want to record ProRes or RAW with the Ursa, you're going to eat up a lot of file space. So you're going to need bigger CFast cards. So you're looking at, you know, like a 256 or 512 gigabytes. And so you're, you're looking around, you know, potentially $1,000 for just one card. So that's something to keep in mind. I, you know, everything just starts adding up. You're adding viewfinders, you're adding CFast cards, not to mention just the price of the camera. And it's, it starts adding up. Another another cost is that it uses V-Lock batteries. You know, a lot of people are used to DSLRs using, you know, you know, $50, $100 batteries. But V-Lock batteries are pretty expensive. You can find them for like 250, but you know, some of them are like 500 bucks just for the battery. And you're going to need multiple batteries. Because when you need to change a battery, you need a backup. So for for the attractive price that's on all the signage for Blackmagic Design, it's cool. Yes, it's great. You know, $3,000 for the Ursa Mini. But it's not really that cheap. There's a lot of additional costs that you'll have to take on in order to actually shoot with the camera. Maybe you're fine with that because even still, it's still a really attractive uh, product. You know, Even like the Sony FS7 which is, you know, similar body style. This FS7 does some higher frame rate stuff, but, you know, let's say they're, they're similar. You're still going to have those added costs on the FS7, and that starts at 8000 So the Ursa Mini is certainly coming in at a much lower price point, but just keep in mind it's not as cheap as it first appears. <laughs> 